found us a seat. Oh, look at this. What's this? What is it? Oh, sick. You get a key ring. Oh, very cool. Golf badge, because 50 years since golf won uh, Le Mans 24 hours. Oh, okay. And that's what this is about. It's about golf. They have a partnership with Tank Oil. And they're about to announce all of this right now. Well, welcome back to, we are currently at the Tag Heuer stand, as you can tell by the Red Bull racing car behind me. And right now, I'm already found YouTuber number one. Come on in, Mr. Me. Archie Ham. How, do you, how does this human get this many crumbs all over him? I don't know, I do apologize. If you haven't seen my video from yesterday, the link is going to be around. Archie also made a video, so you can go check those out. There's a big day. We've both recently gotten rid of our cars. You'll know more about that if you saw my last video. And. We're both also looking for cars. Mm. So, today, my mission is to look around the Geneva Motor Show and try and pinpoint and potentially find my next car. This is the first car that is a, a massive, massive front runner for me. The original Vantage I was very, very intrigued by when I got the Lotus. So now they've come out with a new Vantage and this one is so much more complete. It's now got 510 PS, weighs only 1500 kilos. And if you know a lot about this, even though it hasn't been released here at the Geneva Motor Show, you may know that this shares a lot with AMG, seeing as Aston Martin have now partnered with AMG. So therefore, this is very similar to the AMG GT and GTS line. It's got the same twin turbo four liter V8 and eight speed ZF automatic dual clutch gearbox with flappy paddles. I think it looks fantastic. I actually really like this color. Wasn't a fan when they launched it, but seeing it here in real life makes a lot of sense. Carbon all over the place, modern interior, reliable, new car, and the price point is acceptable. So therefore, I am very, very strongly looking into one of these. I think they look great, and I've spent many hours on the configurator because, man, it is so cool. So this is 100% already the first car I am considering, and it's already here at the stand that we're basically living at. So practical on a front doorstep, and I really enjoy having a proper look around this. Geneva Motor Show, which is very cool, it's basically like the world's biggest dealership. So you can walk around and have so many different cars. Very impressive walking here by Mr. Cameraman and you can really explore everything that you're looking for. So for example, this is another car which I very openly talked about considering. Much lower bracket than the Vantage, but both this and the Vantage are actually quite usable every day. However, if I were to get this, I'd maybe get another car alongside, purely because the price point of this is less than half of what the Vantage is, but I love it. This is the Alpine, uh, so a company which has recently been launched again, uh, coming back from the past. An A110, so a much smaller engine, about half the power. Very lightweight as well, but also it's not too low. It's got quite a big boot, but well, it's got two boots actually, one in the front, one in the back, and you would be able to use this daily, but it would also give you financially some leeway to get something else alongside it, like how I have the Kia Stinger GT S. Now, if I were to buy the Vantage, I would need to use that all of the time. This is definitely something I'm strongly considering. Let me know what you think of the Alpine. The Premier Edition is the one that I would ideally like to get, but now they've just launched a few other little liveries and things that you can get for the car. The Premier Edition is the one to get, limited edition, and it's got the really nice seats inside, nice rims, all of that stuff. So, still looking for one of those. I don't know if I'll get one, but we'll see. This is definitely car number two. You're probably gonna tell by the end of this video, I right now don't really know what I want to get. So, we could go anywhere with this. Another route I'm sort of considering is buying a 911 and then tuning it. So something like that, getting something maybe slightly cheaper but having like a, a big uh, budget to be able to add my modifications and things like that. Because with the Lotus, I bought it completely the way I wanted it. So I never really touched it. But this, for example, is a top car Porsche Turbo S and they have gone all out. There is no way in hell I would be able to afford this particular car because this is a full carbon finish. They've even added the GT3 RS um, front inlets there which looks so cool but full carbon body i mean it's insane they've done the interior the exterior so i wouldn't be able to get to this level but there's another you know thought that i'm thinking maybe get a 911 or get a car like that with our loads of body kits and things you can put on them or an amg gts and then whack a body kit on it i don't know tell me what you guys think but uh this is pretty wild i feel it was too wild to just walk straight past get them angles patrick go on this is what youtubers usually look like at a car show being incredibly social I'm gonna try and go have a conversation with them. You alright guys? 
you what you guys up to. Our, uh, oh, <laughs> Great chat. Now, this is the car everyone's been tweeting me, Instagramming me about. This is the 488 Pista, probably the main star of the Geneva Motor Show this year. Now then, most of you may think that this is just a tweaked 488 GTB. I've just been talking to the guys at Ferrari and it is so different. I think it's maybe the biggest jump up from normal to super lightweight versions of these Ferrari mid-engine V8s. There are so many changes, both aerodynamically, mechanically, and design-wise. It is, it's blown me away. <laughs> Things from even it's got carbon fiber rims with an aluminum coating inside. It's, it's just blown my mind. So 720 horsepower on this car, 2.8 seconds to 60. This is a beast. 720 horsepower conveniently happens to be the same as the McLaren 720, the biggest competitor. But this is a car which I've never financed a car before. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. If I look into finance, this could potentially sorry, be an option. And I wasn't convinced until I've now come here and seen it in real life. And it's amazing. But for the first time ever, we're going to sit in it together. I haven't been in this yet. So if you pop over to the other side. Oh, they haven't changed the basis of the car. All they've done is how they usually do is just stripped it out. So no carpets. You've got carbon fiber all over the place. These huge carbon fiber paddles, which were first seen on the 509 GTO. And I remember falling completely in love with them. But overall, this just feels like a very, very special place to be. What concerns me about this car, how often would I be able to use it? Would it be comfortable to use daily? If I added a new air vent in the front, which has slightly limited boot space, is it practical, basically? But with this new technology, you can whack it into normal and bumpy road mode. You can probably use this daily. I, why am I sat in a 488 piece to talking about whether you could use this daily? It's a tick car. It is very, very cool. I love it. I just want to have a go in it and then I would be able to decide. Anyone who says this is just a tweak 488 GTB, that is just incorrect and does not do this car justice. It is effectively a whole new car based on the same model. Quick stop off at McLaren, not to look at the new GTR Senna or the actual Senna, because all of those are way, way, way too expensive. However, I'm here looking at a 570 GT, my favorite of the 570 line. I just think it's so much more practical, better looking. And right here, they have an all black version. So I thought this is probably another one we could put on the cards. 570 Sports Series McLaren is something that I am looking at, considering. Sam's already had one, loved it. A few things that worry me about this are reliability. McLaren have a, a bit of a reputation with reliability. And second of all, whether it would excite me or, uh, enough or not. But it's an absolutely beautiful car, and one I thought that it would be rude to just walk straight past and not even put in this video. So, there's another one. I really like it. Look, these guys, okay, before I start this video, these guys right here, aren't agreeing with me right now. They're even annoyed that I'm even here talking about this, but I'm I... Still, I'm still processing. You're, you're I'm still processing. I think I'm not the side. I, 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 no. I'm being completely honest with you right now. This could be the front runner for me. This is the Morgan Aero 8 GT. Only eight of them are being built and they're all sold. Slight issue, but maybe we could, you know, who knows? But <laughs> I think this thing is epic. It's Get got just, it's got under 400 horsepower. Just under 400 horsepower. The stats is not really what it's about. I think it looks epic. It's got, it sounds amazing. Naturally aspirated V8, manual gearbox with the side exit exhaust. I think this thing would be a beast. And uh, I just think it looks fantastic. And also my grandfather had a Morgan, one sort of somewhat similar to this one right here. And uh, that's basically the car that got me into, into uh, cars. And he's sadly no longer with us. So I think going back and buying a Morgan would just be something fantastic to do. And this is the first time I've seen one and really truly believed like, oh, that is nice. So, let's hop into it, see what it's like inside. I don't, this isn't the most practical of all options. And you're, you're literally coming with me. Oh, this one's actually got a flap and paddle. Oh, yes. Oh, this is cool. I mean, it's not very spacious. It feels like a proper cockpit. It just smells, smells like leather in here, smells like luxury. I like this a lot. Ooh, this is one of those unexpected ones that kind of catches you by surprise, but then you end up almost falling in love with it. I don't know, comment down below. Another option, let me know what you think. I wish this was an option. More Geneva motorway walking, motorway, motor show. That shows you that we're slightly tired. Look at the size of this thing. And this is one of many halls. I'm gonna step onto this and slowly move away from you guys. Oh, you coming on with me? Well, hey, so we're here and we are checking out the Lamborghini Huracan 
performante spider. So this car is actually one that, again, like the Pista, is, you know, very high in the budget. So this would need some major finance deal, but it's definitely something worth considering. This is around, this is around 20,000, 25,000 euros more than the coupe. Um, but same same stats, so 640 horsepower, 3.1 seconds to 60, and 600 newton meters of torque. It looks awesome. This one has been done through, through the Lamborghini sort of one-off section, so we've got this awesome pink color. We've got what I love, one of my favorite things on this car, is the forged carbon fiber. They were one of the first people to do it, and on the Pepper Manta, I think it looks absolutely awesome. So this spec is way out there. And I'm not sure if I would go for the Spider. If you're getting the Performante, I would maybe just go to be able to use on track the Coupe a bit more. But it's definitely something that uh, I would love to be able to go for. I'm considering. Not sure whether it'd be able to work out. But you know, as with all of this, comment down below what you think. Comment which of these cars you'd leave for. And I think we're going to go to one more track-focused car, which is going to be our last car of the show to round up all of these cars I'm looking at. I've there's a lot. There's a lot of decisions to be made. We're going to round it off today with this, which is probably one of the most popular cars here, the new GT3 RS. Now, I say new, it is a bit of just a sort of rethink of the old one. So there are new air vents around the car. Uh, the power is at 520 horsepower. It's only 0.1 of a second slower to 60 than the Performance Spider. So 3.2 and just, ah, oh, I, I think it's very cool. Not sure about the color. I'm not going to lie. It's a bit bright, but this is something that First of all, is again, very expensive in Swiss francs, they're over 250 grand, um, but also very, very hard to get. Even if you want one, you realistically won't get one. So on that note, this is something which I've been looking into quite a lot, a Carrera T, the base, but I think very cool, uh, 911. So it's sort of the, the more raw, more back to basics car that they're making at the moment. So GT3 RS, would love it, very expensive, very hard to get. That could be a shout though. Let me know what you guys think. Anyways, let's head back to the tag stand now. Sit down because I'm exhausted and let's recap. Finally, I can sit down. I apologize if you can hear any music, but this being our base here, I felt it was only right to film my outro. But all I wanted to say was thank you guys for watching as always. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Of course, comment down below. Help me make this decision because I am seriously considering uh, these different cars that I put in the video and a uh, big moves coming I'm moving somewhere much further away than where I last moved so I'm gonna need a car now that the Lotus is gone to move into this new place so please comment any of these cars or any other cars that you think would work for me and uh, we'll go on this adventure together and if you want to follow it please remember to subscribe if you aren't already cheers guys bye bye